Welcome to the Backwoods University. Today's class is going to be on uh, some handy uh, hand tools uh, that you may want to look into uh, to have at your cabin or your home. Uh, now the tools that we're going to look at today uh, are all non-power tools. Uh, non-power has both a plus and a minus. Um, Non-power hand tools, of course, uh, <laughs> you don't have any assistance by a uh, engine or a motor or a battery or fuel or whatever to help you uh, with the work. It's all done by hand, but that also is a plus. Uh, you don't have an engine to maintain, <laughs> batteries that go bad, uh, fuel, uh, you name it. So there's both pluses and minuses to hand tools. Um, these are just some hand tools that we're going to talk about today in today's class that you may find handy at your camp, at your cabin, uh, your home. The uh, first tool that I'd like to discuss is a, uh, a good axe. Uh, a uh, axe can be used for a lot of, uh, a lot of chores. Um, make sure that it's sharp maintained well, that the handle is in good shape, uh, and um, you can find axes in all sorts of uh, styles and uh, weights. Uh, this one is about a three and a half pound, uh, it's a True Temper uh, Kelly, and uh, it would be a good choice, something like this would be a good choice as an all-around axe. This could be used for cutting, uh, limbing, um, splitting wood, whatever. It's a good choice, uh, an axe about this size. Uh, the next thing uh, that we're gonna talk about is some saws. Um, this is a big uh, one-man cross-cut saw. Um, you can uh, find these type of saws in either the one-man style. Here's another one-man saw, but it has a handle. Uh, that can be attached to it to convert it to a two-man saw. You'll notice the teeth on this are different than the teeth on that. Um, different teeth patterns. Um, specialize in whether it's green wood, soft wood, hard wood. Um, but to tell you the truth, any tooth pattern will work uh, with any type of wood. It just, uh, if you were to cut a whole lot of a certain type of uh, wood, uh, you may want to look at a tooth pattern that uh, is appropriate for that. Um, now sharpening these saws, uh, here's, a, here's a great big uh, uh, two-man saw. Now sharpening these saws is a little involved. Uh, you can still find some uh, places that will uh, sharpen the saw for you. You can do it yourself also. There's uh, two types of teeth on a saw. There's cutters and rakers. The cutters do exactly what, what, what it says, they cut. And those are slightly offset from each other. In other words, this one's bent towards me, that one's bent a little ways away from me. Those are what cut the fiber of the, of the wood. Then there are rakers. The rakers are set slightly lower than the cutters. And that's what cleans out the uh, sawdust, or whatever you want to call it, uh, the cut wood from your cut. Um, uh, these are, are resharpenable. Uh, there also is the option of a, what they call a buck saw. And uh, here's a big buck saw here. Uh, you can get these in all sizes from, from small to large. Um, and normally the blades on these are not resharpenable. Uh, they're they're uh, basically disposable. When they get when they get uh, dull, you replace them. They're relatively inexpensive, and they uh, are easy to change. You just clamp them in place. Uh, so you got a couple of choices there. You got your uh, your uh, buck saw like this. You got your your big uh, cross cut saws like these. Um, and that would be if you were going to be cutting some uh, timber, some uh, trees, logs, branches, 
firewood, whatever. Uh, you may want to look into these as an option. If you're uh, going to be building uh, whatever with, with uh, dimensional lumber, um, you're going you're gonna to maybe want to look into a, a, a handsaw. Now handsaws, uh, like everything, they come in a, a million different varieties and everything else. Uh, there's basically two different types. There's a cross-cut saw and what they call a rip saw. Rip saw would be for cutting uh, uh, down a board and a um, cross-cut saw would be for cutting across the board. Um, the number of teeth, uh, the different patterns, whatever, um, uh, there's a million variables. Uh, uh, if you were to purchase something like this, make sure that the saw is sharp. Um, if it's sharp, it's relatively effortless to cut through the, through the uh, boards. If it's dull, you're just uh, wasting your time. Um, I have my saws uh, sharpened by a professional, uh, the Amish fella that, that sharpens them and they come back, they're beautiful. It just cost me a few bucks to get them sharpened. Uh, I'm sure there's other places that'll sharpen hand saws. This is what is referred to as a <coughs> log carrier. It has these two jaws on it that clamp around a log and then uh, one uh, person holds one side and one person holds the other side and uh, you can drag a log a little easier with something like this. Um, related to this, uh, and I forgot to bring it, uh, <laughs> bring it out, out, of the, out of the shed, is uh, is a log jack, which is used, it's a lever used to uh, lift logs. Uh, but you may find something like this might be handy if you're uh, doing that type of heavy work. Another handy tool that you might want to look into is what they call a draw knife. This is a draw knife here. It has a, a sharpened edge and a couple of handles on it. And how this works, if you were to uh, uh, say you wanted to debark a limb or you wanted to shave down uh, a uh, piece of wood to a certain size uh, this gets the wood would get clamped down and you draw this knife towards you and uh, it cuts off uh, slivers of the wood um, that's a draw knife this is what they call a spoke shave uh, Best I can describe it, it's, a, it's like a little, uh, it's like a little version of, of the uh, draw knife, a little, uh, it's got a little sharp blade in there and you can uh, plane down uh, a little more uh, uh, fine pieces of it. Um, uh, also, uh, if you wanted to uh, cut some uh, notches in something or whatever, uh, you may want to look at some uh, chisels. These are some uh, smaller timber framing chim chisels. So uh, that's uh, another tool that you may want to look at. Um, in, in order to uh, work on a lot of projects, you have to clamp them in place. So you may want to look at some uh, different types of clamps uh, to hold uh, your work in place. If you're uh, going to be drilling some holes, uh, in, in your project, uh, there's some options there. Uh, here's a hand-powered drill here. Your bit goes in there in the chuck. This is what they call a breast drill. Uh, there's the chuck where your, your drill would, bit would go in, and it's hand-operated. You also have the uh, option of using uh, what they call augers. Uh, here's a pretty good size one. Um, now this has uh, got a handle that's uh, set in place and uh, you uh, auger your hole. Uh, here is one, I believe that these are called scotch eyes. Um, the handle is not permanently attached. Uh, there's a hole in there and uh, you just basically make the handle uh, uh, out in the woods or whatever and, and use it. Uh, if you are going to pick up some of these used, just make sure that that screw 
that the threads on that screw that draws the auger down into the wood are not all boogered up because if they are, uh, even though it's, you may have a sharp uh, edge on your, on your uh, cutter here, it's uh, not going to work well. So if you are picking these up used, keep a close eye on the uh, thread. Make sure the thread is decent on them. Well, I, uh, probably one of the most obvious tools you're going to want is a hammer. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't want to neglect talking about hammers. This particular hammer was my grandfather's and uh, it's got to be oh, at least 60 plus years old and it still works great. Uh, uh, it also, if you're doing any uh, work that a, a regular carpenter's hand, hammer uh, might not work for, you may want to look into a, a wooden mallet. And, uh, Here's one that was made out of a piece of hop, hop horn beam, which is a very hard wood. And this comes in handy when you're uh, hammering in something that you don't uh, want to mess up. So there's a couple of options there. If, uh, if you're so inclined, <laughs> you may want to look at a level uh, so that your whatever you're building isn't all crooked. Uh, uh, simple level. Another uh, hand tool that you may find useful is a plane. Uh, this one, I believe, is referred to as a jack plane. Um, then there's ones that are, are larger, such as this, uh, and uh, there's a blade in there, and as you move that across your piece of wood, it, uh, it planes out a, a smooth surface. There you have it, some options for some hand tools that you might find uh, useful at your home or your camp. Um, thanks for stopping by the university today. Uh, take care until next time.